more news after a brief. SCTV now begins its programming day. Yes, it's SCTV, beaming its two cents worth across the nation. Starring Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy. Andrea Martin. And Martin Short. Television as you've never seen it before. This is SCTV. With tonight's special guest, Catherine O'Hara and Dave Thomas. It's time for the Halfwits. Tonight, the exciting semifinals. And here's the host of the Halfwits, Alex Trebell. Thank you, Johnny Ola. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to Halfwits tonight. The semifinals, where the best contestants that have appeared on the show over the past season are teamed up and pitted against each other to see who will end up in our exciting championship round. And as hard as it is to believe, these four people have ended up here tonight. So now let's meet our contestants. <laughs> Arthur Andrew Liggett. And Arthur, what have you been up to since your last appearance on the show? Oh, I... You know, I... The usual. Like, uh, like what? Oh, just, um, the usual. The usual what? Um, uh, stuff. Good. Always a treat chatting with you, Arthur. And, uh, and now let's meet your lucky partner. I met him already. I'm sorry? I met him already, Alex. I know him. We know, Arthur. I thought perhaps the studio audience would, uh, like a chance to, uh, to meet him. Oh. Once again, if that's all right with you. Let's welcome Wesley Wilkes. Wesley, uh, very nice to have you back. Really? How have you been? Well, not too good, Alex. My back's been bothering me. I've got this ache in my lower back. It's terrible. Like this morning, you know, I was really irritable. Pain was so bad I could barely breathe. Really wonderful. Really nice, Wesley. Uh, good luck to both of you. And now let's meet your opponents. Let's say hello to Blanche Ray Kellogg. Hello. And Blanche, I understand you recently got married. Yes, I did. That is correct, Alex. Um, how long have you been married? Since the wedding, straight through. Who's the lucky guy? My husband. Blanche, can we expect to hear the pitter-patter of little Ray Kellogg feet in the future? I don't understand, Alex. Are you planning to have kids, children? No, I'm afraid not, Alex. I'm going to concentrate on my career. And what is that? Housewife and hopefully mother. Mm-hmm. Excellent choice. Blanche Ray Kellogg. And finally, Lawrence Orbach. Righto, Alex. And Lawrence, I understand that uh, congratulations are in order. Yes, they are. Would you care to tell us why? No, I'm not, I'm not sure. Did you not just graduate from high school? Yes, I, I think I did. Congratulations. Lawrence, so you're not possibly considering college, are you? Yes and no, Alex. I'm considering offers from Harvard. And they have a fine football team, Alex, but I'm not exactly sure where Harvard is, so I don't know how I would make any of the games. Very, very good. And now I think it's time to get down to the business of playing Halfwits. <laughs> And quite simply, here's how the semifinals work. Each team gets to pick a category, out of which comes a mystery word, which one player has to convey to his partner by using up to three words to describe it. For example, if the mystery word is baseball, one might use these three words to describe it. Pitch, hit, slide. Now, each team has one minute to guess as many mystery words as they can. However, if they guess incorrectly, that same mystery word goes to the other team who can use the remaining time to chalk up as many points for themselves as they can. Now, each mystery word is worth 
five points, and the team ahead on points at the end of the first round gets to pick the category for the following round. The team ahead at the end of three rounds gets to play our fast lightning round, where each mystery word is worth 50 points with only a 30-second time limit. Now, any questions? Yes, Arthur. Do you have the time, Alex? <laughs> time is uh, 8.35. Thank you. Alex? Alex? Yes, Lawrence. Alex, if the word baseball comes up, can we use the same words that you just used? Well, Lawrence, uh, I was just using that as an example. I don't think the word baseball will come up. Yes, but Alex, if it comes up... Then yes, yes, you can use the same three words that I used. Because those are good words, pitch, hit, slide. Lawrence, we have to move on. Team Captain Arthur Andrew Liggett, confer with your partner and pick a category. Arthur, we need a category. Okay. Arthur, we need a category. All right. Um, favorite pets. <laughs> favorite pets is the category. Arthur and Wesley, you have one minute and go. <laughs> Arthur, you're wasting valuable time here. Well, no points on that. Uh, Arthur would have helped if you had said something just to help your partner out. The word was Lassa Absa. You could have said dog to bet short. No points on that. And uh, Lawrence and Blanche, the door is wide open here. Pick a category. Well, Alex, I've always had a soft spot for airplanes. So we'll go with Frank Lloyd Wright. <laughs> Frank Lloyd Wright uh, is the category. Uh, Blanche and Lawrence, you have one minute and go. Cockpit. Cockpit? <laughs> Sorry, that answer is incorrect. No points on that. Um, please keep your category in mind when giving the clues. It uh, really helps. Now, because of that incorrect answer, Arthur and Wesley, you can complete that round. Wesley, the word is yours, and go. Functional. <laughs> Cockfight. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, no points on that. That was uh, very, very wrong. Now, I'm only going to say this once. Please listen to me. Contestants, you can't just repeat the word that's on the card. You have to describe it so your partner can guess it. And Lawrence Frank Lloyd Wright was not one of the Wright brothers. He was an architect. Uh, please, if you have any questions about your category, ask them up front. We can save everybody a lot of time. All right? Does everybody understand? Yes, Arthur. Who's ahead at this point, Alex? Nobody! <laughs> Is ahead on points? We haven't had a correct answer yet. Nobody's ahead. And uh, let's just calm down here at this point and collect your little thoughts. And uh, Johnny, I'll tell our viewers at home what our contestants could win tonight on Halfwits. Well, Alex, tonight on Halfwits, one of our teams could win a brand new stereo record cleaner. To stop the terrible record cleaner brush axe magic, you can keep your stereo record collection dust and lint free. Just one wipe with this priceless little item removes dust and foreign particles that settle on your records, giving them longer life and a look that spells brand new. Yes, save money by keeping your records in vintage condition with the new record cleaner brush by Rush. Rush, the, the brush people. Back to you, Alex. Thank you, Johnny Ola. And ladies and gentlemen, because our teams are stalemated at zero right now, and the chances of getting a correct answer seem dismal at this point, to say the least, I have decided to flip a coin to see which team will go into our lightning round. So we'll now call on our team captains, Lawrence Orbach, and Arthur Andrew Liggett to step forward for the coin toss. Gentlemen, are you ready? Ready, ready Alex. Alex. Okay, call it while it's in the air, please. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go first. You go first. Doesn't matter who goes first. Just call the coin while it's in the air. Okay? Here we go. Alex? <laughs> yes, Arthur. I forgot what those things are. What things? You know, those things. What things? The things on the coins. Heads and tails. 
A little slow upstairs, uh, Alex. Yes, call it while it's in the air. It's really not that difficult. Here we go. Heads, heads. You can't both call heads. You see, one person calls heads, the other person calls tails. That's all there is to it, okay? Call it while it's in the air, please. Here we go. Okay. Thanks. You said heads last time. All right, return to your seats. Does it matter which seats we go back to? I don't care. Just return to your seats. Here we go. Hi, Wesley. And, uh, we're out of time. No winners, no surprise, no correct answers. What else is new? So until next time, if indeed there is a next time, this is Alex Trevell saying good night. Tails, Tails Alex. Tails, Alex. Tails, Alex. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Let me see. Tails, Alex. Alex, look. I'm fixing the budget. Hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. 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 This is SCTV. You've never seen anything like it before. But now, it's in your home. Hello. And you'll never be alone again. It just spoke. No, Mother, it was just me. Well, I don't know. I just don't know. I've never had anything but cats around here. And where have they all gone? I don't know where they went, dear. They just went. That's all. I don't know. Maybe the neighbors took them. Thankless. Cats always have been, always will be thankless. That's what I say. We know you don't like cats. That's what I said. Thankless. This isn't a cat, Essie. I don't like cats. Yes, yes, yes! What is it, Essie? Just one of God's little creatures who needs warmth and food and water. And Lord knows we could share our home for a little while. Well, it's my home, too. I'm putting on some papers. Look at the teeth on that creature, and you're giving him bananas and coconuts? <laughs> well, babies. What do we do, Mother? Sorry to bother you, ladies. Can I have a word with you for a minute? Yes, come on in, officer. Thank you. Why don't you step into the kitchen where it's warmer? Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, there's really no uh, reason to be worried. But uh, three dogs are missing in the neighborhood. Oh, I'm glad you didn't say have been found missing. That expression confuses the hell out of me. Don't be silly, Essie. Well, there's no need for alarm, but uh, your next-door neighbor was uh, dragged into his blackberry bushes at the bottom of his hill. Had his foot chewed up pretty badly. Took 427 stitches. Ooh, poor thing. Well, at least they bothered to save it. What do you mean? Well, my brother Bert, when he was 12 years old, he got his finger chewed up in an ice cream mixer, and they took it off. Well, maybe it's easier to fix a foot. Oh, they left a lot in the mixer, though. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, as I said, no need to be concerned, but we would like you to stay inside for the next few nights till we get a handle on the situation. Well, we're always here, officer. All right. right. Thank you very much for coming. Oh, right. Good night. Good night. Thanks a lot. Call and listen. This is just my job. Thank you. Four hundred and twenty-seven stitches. Nasty. to bed. Night. You're not going to just leave it there, are you? Should I sleep in my bed? I don't know if I can lift it. Well, shouldn't we take it out for a wee? Yeah, I guess. Okay, I'll take it out. 
Come on. Want to go outside? Come on. How do I call it when it's time for it to come back in? Oh, you know pets, dear. They always come back. They get something better to eat at the neighbor's. The New Pet. Coming soon to a theater near you. No! Oh! Uh, hi! Uh, oh, uh, commercials are coming to pay TV, and not soon enough for some people's liking. If you're like me, you probably watch TV all day. Eh, sorry, it's a little hot in here under the lights. At an average of 18 commercial minutes per hour, that's 432 minutes. Nearly seven hours of valuable time available to you every day, thanks to TV commercials. Hey! What? Oh, I walked too far. Excuse me. <laughs> time to make a sandwich, read your mail, check your answering service, feed the dog, put baby to bed. Why, even use this amazing metal detector to find valuable buried treasure. Or maybe you'd rather listen in on private conversations with this, with this parabolic microphone. Or maybe you want to just sit in front of your TV and not move. Play the converter box like me, like an organ, flipping from channel to channel, watching several TV shows every hour. I know I do, but I still need commercials. They break... Oh, gee. Uh, they break up a program. Allow me to sneak over to other channels to see what's going on without missing one second of my favorite show. If you're like me, and I know you undoubtedly are, you probably love commercials for their own sake. They tell you what's going on out there, what products are available, what you could buy if you wanted to leave your house. But let's face it, I don't want to leave my house, and you're, uh, you're just like me, so you're not going anywhere either. So sit back, relax, and don't get mad at pay TV. Commercials are coming. Let's face it, FM radio didn't last without commercials, and pay TV won't make it either. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some 60-second and 30-second spots to watch. How was that? Was that a take? Is that a keeper? Is it? And now, it's time for Happy Hour. With your host, Happy Marsden, and Sammy the Goose, and Mike Short. Hi, kids. We're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to be watching another episode of Six Gun Justice, and we'll be spending some time with Sammy the Goose. <laughs> Hi, Sammy. <laughs> And Mike the bartender is going to show us another trick. But first of all, it's time for birthday wishes. So, if today's your birthday, happy birthday. Oh, Sammy says happy birthday too. What's that, Sammy? <laughs> Sammy says it's time to take a, a look at another episode of Six Gun Justice. Now, kids, if you'll remember in yesterday's episode... Well, watch carefully at the beginning. They'll probably recap what happened. <laughs> Mike, uh, want to Six Gun Justice here? Let's vamos real quick like. Sure, boss. <coughs> you all right, Chief? 
cheap laughs? I'm all right, but I ain't sure about my hat. <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> now, cheap laughs, here's my plan. I'm heading over to the Butterfield Ranch to warn them not to sell. I think there may be some radium on that property. You head into town and pick up some supplies and grub. What about bullets? Uh, got some bullets too. Okay, then I'll get supplies, bullets, and grub. Right. Should I get the usual grub? Yeah, coffee, flour, and bacon. Okay, then it's coffee, flour, bacon, beans, bullets, and grub. Right. Oh, cheap laughs. Pick up a bolt of calico and some chewing tobacco. You betcha! Now, cheap laughs. Don't forget the bullets. Okay, partner! <laughs> oh! Oh! God! Oh, <laughs> <hemlock>. <laughs> Good trick, Mike. I can't move my thumbs. Boys and girls, you might want to try this trick at home using milk cartons or pop bottles. What's that, Sammy? Oh, it's time for this short message. Join me on Stars in One when my guest will be legendary comedian Bob Hope. What did she say? No, James Coco said to Katherine Hepburn, that you had told him about your early recollections in the show business. Let me tell you something about James Coco, okay? I think he eats too much. I think he should go on a diet. That would help him a lot. He's like that other guy. What's his name? Don DeLuise. Those two guys, I can't tell them apart. That's Bob Hope with me, Brock Linehan, later tonight on Stars and One. Well, welcome back, kids. I didn't think Don Mills and Cheap Laughs were going to escape all that heavy gunfire. Incidentally, who's your favorite character so far? What's that, Sammy? Cheap Laughs? <laughs> yes, he is a funny man. You know, kids, Cheap Laughs wasn't his real name. He was born Emil Obradovich, but changed his name in vaudeville. Apparently, he was well-loved by audiences, but picked up the name Cheap Laughs from the other performers who felt he would do anything to get a laugh or steal a scene. He was once knocked unconscious by W.C. Fields during a performance. Cheap Laughs Johnson made 28 films in all, the last of which was The Misfits, a film in which he had a, a small part, but never finished because of his un untimely death. We have a picture of it here. Let's look here. Anyway. This, this is a picture of him right after he died. Kind of a sad story. Anyway, Mike, uh, fresh me up here. I'm, uh, excuse me, I gotta get some ice. Okay. <laughs> well, boys and girls, why don't we get back to part two of episode six? Right? Now let me see. I got beans, bacon, and flour. Now what else? You want coffee to wash down that grub, don't you? Yeah, coffee. Now, uh, you want Anthony to weigh his supplies? Oh yeah, I want a slab of calico and a bowl of tobacco. Or is it the other way around? Calico? Oh. Or tobacco? Oh! Now, have you got everything? Yeah. I've got grub, supplies, flowers, calico, beans, and bacon. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Ain't this enough? Oh, cheap lamb. 
great suffering cats. Slate's been dickering with you over this land, hasn't he? If I were you, I wouldn't sign the deed over to him, Miss Butterfield. Why not? He says this land's worthless. Worthless? Why, that... There's more radium on this land than you've ever seen. What would he want radium for? I suspect he's thrown in with the axis. What would Tojo and those varmints want with radium? I don't have time to explain now. Where do you keep the deed? It's right over here. I'll take this for safekeeping. Wrong, Mills. I'll take that deed. Oh! Wait, Blackie! Drop your gun! I thought we finished you and Cheap Labs off back at the shack. Where were you hiding? We were listening outside the door. And seeing that you know about the radium, me and Blackie's gonna have to finish you off real permanent like. Right, Blackie? Wrong, Blackie! Drop your guns! Oh. Cheap Labs! <laughs> Just in time! And a good thing, too, boss! I got your supplies, everything you needed. Good work. I got flour, calico, beans, bacon, bull, bullet, bull, oh, be a son of a whore, Toad. I forgot the bullets. All right, drop those guns. Move on over there. Come on, Chief Laps. And don't fall down either. All right. Looks like the tables are turned, eh, Mills? Now hand over that deed. Sure, I'll hand it over. I'll get it. All right, get up. Chip laughs. Leave him alone. Get over there, Blackie. Now, pick up that deed. Sure. Hand it over. Yeah, I... Whoops, I dropped it. I'm not falling for that. I'll get it, boss. Oh! Blackie, over here. Hey, get some rope. Tie them up. Yes, boss. Now what do you want me to do, boss? Light up that candle and hitch it up to the rope. You'll never get away with this, Cantrell. Yeah, and don't think I don't know you killed my pa. That's because he stood between me and the railroad coming through. Railroad? I thought you wanted radium. Well, little lady, how do you think I was going to get the radium out? By a mule train? <laughs> Blackie! Yeah, boss. You got that candle ready? Yeah, boss. I got it lit up all hot like. Good. We're going to make this look real accidental like. <laughs> Come on, let's fan those. <laughs> now, don't you worry, Miss Butterfield. We're in no danger. Why, heck, all they did was light that candle or feed that rope. That don't scare me none. Yeah. But that rope is holding up that chandelier. Sure are in a heap of trouble. I wonder if they'll get out of it. Not sure. This call happened. Well, looks like we're out of time, so uh, join us next time. Me and Mike the bartender and Goose. Sammy. Sammy. So, uh, so join us next time and uh, so long. Drive safe. Thursday on
on SCTV. The horror of nuclear annihilation and the extermination of humanity is explored graphically in a gripping two-hour docudrama. Humanity, the final days. It has been called the single most important event in television history, outlining in terrifying detail the inevitability of our civilization's ultimate destruction. Then, it's laughs aplenty when Bobby Pittman takes you on a side-spreading excursion through his wacky world with Bobby's special guest, Jackie Rogers Jr., Lorna Minnelli, and Sammy Modlin. It's an hour of comedy mayhem you won't want to miss. That's Humanity, the Final Days. And Bobby Bittman, My Wacky World. This Thursday night on SCTV. He has been called an American institution. He's been able to call over nine American presidents friends. And for over 50 years, he has made us laugh at the lunacy of the world around us. I'm Brock Linehan, and my very special guest today on Stars in One is that intriguing compilation of complexities, octogenarian Bob Hope. Cleveland, Ohio, 1908. And a six-year-old, Leslie Towns Hope, sits in the Alhambra movie cinema, awaiting the first reel of the first film he will ever see. Was that the first time that you fell in love with the concept of cinema? Boy, that's wild. That's amazing. Who does your research here anyway, Methuselah? <laughs> if you were making films today, yeah. what kind of comedies would you be gearing the public toward? Well, I don't know. I mean, when you take a look at a horror movie like Psycho 2 and it gets big laughs in the theater. I was there. I was in the valley watching that. And I saw Tony Perkins just send them into the aisles in ways that I wish I could, you know. I mean, when he opened that drawer and looked at that knife, they were just like, you had to pick them up off the floor with spatulas. They loved that. But, uh, so I don't know. I, I think I'd do horrors if I was doing comedy today. Funny horror movies. Yeah. Who might you use as the current crop of fellow comedians? What, you mean those National Lampoon kids? Whoever. No, I don't... A Madeline Kahn, perhaps? Can you imagine? Kahn and Hope? It could be intriguing. Now, she's more Mel Brooks, you know. She's not really... I, I don't really swing with her, you know. I th I, she's into that kind of a... kind of a Mel Brooks zaniness that I never related to. You know, he does some stuff that... I really don't understand. You know, he did a movie, silent movie, where he didn't talk in the whole movie. How could anybody do that these days? Would you like to tell us a little bit about your next special? I'm sure you want to promote something. You rarely appear on a show without a reason of your own. Geez, you're unreasonably bitter. No, I don't have I don't have anything to promote right now, you know. I'm just kind of taking it easy. I'm I'm as you'd say between gigs. Vietnam. I a war. Let's let's leave this area alone. Come on. A war that many regret, Mr. Hope. Yeah, I guess they do. Do you? Do you not feel that the alienation of the youth that took place during that war for you has been a youth market you were never able to recapture and therefore led to you retiring from films in 72 with the exception of the Frank Oz participation? You know, you, could, you have a way of asking a question that makes you forget what it's all about by the time you get to the end. You gotta... You, you, when you stop talking, it's like walking to the edge of a cliff. I have no idea what you just asked. Was something about Vietnam. Vietnam. Yeah, that Vietnam. bummed me out. I really, I blame the whole thing in Vietnam on the French. They've been weasels from the from day one. I did Paris Holiday with Fernandel, and I found out just what kind of weasels the French are. You know, they may love Jerry Lewis, but I don't have a high regard for them at all. How does Bob Hope stay in shape? I get up in the morning at about six o'clock, and I have a bowl of stewed fruit, and then I uh, then I go and hang from a bar for about an hour, and. Uh, then I make a couple of calls. Hang from a bar or go to a bar? No, hang from a bar, you nit. I do it to straighten out my back. I don't drink, you know. How do you respond to Christina Crawford or Gary Crosby writing books about their late parents? I think they're little wimps. Little wimpy liars is what they are. I'll tell you something, boy. I was, I was out with Crosby's dad every day on the golf course, and he never beat me once. <laughs> Why don't we pause for this station identification? Stay tuned.
tuned for more on Stars in One. It's the greatest boxing story ever told. And in this corner, weighing 211 pounds from Lexington, Alabama, now fighting out of Detroit, Michigan, the heavyweight champion of the world, Joe Nurse. Yes! From the Bronx in Massachusetts, the heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano. Marciano! He had something to prove from to the Camden, world. New Jersey, the heavyweight champion of the world, Floyd Patterson. Patterson! Ingemar Johansson! Johansson! Well, Johnny, have you decided what you're going to do with your life? I don't know. No. He was destined to become the greatest ring announcer in boxing history. Don't worry, son. I'm sure you'll find something. You know, Dad, I've always known that someday I'll be famous. I don't know why, and I don't know what it is I'll do. But someday I'll be famous. Famous. I know, son. Johnny Addy, The Untold Story, this Thursday at 9 on SCTV. You haven't made a movie in 11 years, and yet there's always rumors that you will direct one. If you did, what film would that be? Geez, I don't know, I don't know. I thought a lot about that, you know, there's a little package we're trying to put together now, it's a remake of the greatest story ever told, you know. We're gonna put that sucker together. That's a big, big number. Do you have any? Do you have any ideas what kind of effects are in that thing? That's a huge number. Well, of course we got uh, we got a number of people we've been considering for the lead for the part of Jesus. Let me make a guess. Go ahead. Max von Sydow oh, repeating no. his role. No, no, we got we got another guy in mind that we think would be real good. Gil Gerard. Do you know Gil? Twenty fifth century Buck yeah. Rogers. Yeah, yeah, he's terrific. I think he'd be great as the Lord. And as Mary. Now that's more of a, I don't know, I, I promised Phyllis Diller that if I ever did a serious movie that I'd give her a good part, you know. So I, since she's got her looks back, she's tempting for that role, but I might, I might give her one of the older chorus girls. I might give her that role instead. Have you never been tempted to direct yourself, you being such a cinema buff? Yeah, well that's what I'm going to do with this greatest story ever told, you know. I'm going to play Tiberius and then also direct the movie. It's a smaller role. Normally, I'd play the lead, but I just don't think I'm right for the lead in this. Gil's perfect for it, you know. He's a marvelous boy. He's got, he has that look of innocence and at the same time kind of a pathos that I think is, uh, and he's good looking too. I don't think he can have, uh, I don't think he can have the Lord played as an ugly guy. I don't think people would buy it. You were quoted as saying that only Jack Klugman could play Joseph. Do you still agree? Yeah, Jack's got the role. No question. He's marvelous. He has the anger that I think Joseph would have. Good casting, Mr. Hope. Yeah, so far it's worked out really well. We're, we're all happy, you know. But anyway, we're going to be doing that. And, uh, and then, of course, we've got the parting of the Red Sea, which is not chronologically in the greatest story ever told, but I demanded that it be put in just because uh, it's a damn good effect and I'd hate to see it wasted. You know? We're going to have ships just tumbling into the area in the middle there, you know. And I'll be back there behind the camera yelling, cut just after I make my exit as Tiberius. Do you see this as a Christmas release? Yeah, we kind of hope to bring it out at Christmas with all the other comedies. So it is a comedy? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, you don't think I'd do a drama, do you? This is the greatest story ever told, and it's the funny version of the greatest story ever told. Our time is gone. I thank you, Mr. Hope, for being my guest on Stars in One. This has been a rare privilege for me and for my audience. We thank you. Well, thank you, Brock. It was a real pleasure to be on your show. Will this ever be seen in the States? Of course it will be, Mr. Hope. This is not to be shown in the States. <laughs> you understand? Under no circumstances. But, Mr. Hope, this has to be shown in the States. This doesn't have to be shown in the States. You understand me? You're making my blood boil now. Don't get me mad. We are seen in the States, Mr. Hope. Where?
There's a spy loose at SCTV, and no one is above suspicion. What jackpot? We're going to have to frisk you, Mrs. Frickley. Thought you never asked. Oh, lower. Lower. Keep going. Get that thing to vibrate, you really have something. With special guest, Fred Willard, later this month on SCTV.